North Korea supplied 7,000 containers of munitions to Russia. North Korea has shipped around 7,000 containers filled with munitions and other military equipment to Russia since last year to help support its war in Ukraine, South Korea's defense minister said, according to Time. Shin Won-sik shared the assessment at a news conference hours after the South Korean and Japanese militaries said the North fired multiple short-range ballistic missiles into its eastern waters, adding to a streak of weapons displays amid growing tensions with rivals. Since the start of 2022, North Korea has used Russia's invasion of Ukraine as a distraction to ramp up its weapons tests and has also aligned with Moscow over the conflict as leader Kim Jong-un tries to break out of diplomatic isolation and join a united front against the United States. U.S. and South Korean officials have accused North Korea of supplying Russia with artillery shells, missiles and other equipment in recent months to help fuel its war on Ukraine, saying that such arms transfers accelerated after a rare summit between Kim and Russian President Vladimir Putin in September. North Korea, in exchange, possibly received badly needed food and economic aid and military assistance aimed at upgrading Kim's forces, according to South Korean officials and private experts. Both Moscow and Pyongyang have denied the existence of an arms deal between the countries. During a news conference in Seoul, Shin said the South Korean military believes the North, after initially relying on ships, has been increasingly using its rail networks to send arms supplies to Russia through their land border. In exchange for sending possibly several million artillery shells and other supplies, North Korea has received more than 9,000 Russian containers likely filled with aid, Shin said. He raised suspicions that Russia could be providing North Korea with fuel, possibly in defiance of UN Security Council sanctions that tightly cap the country's imports of oil and petroleum products. While fuel shortages likely forced North Korea to scale back winter training activities for its soldiers in recent years, South Korea's military assesses that the North expanded such drills this January and February, Shin said. NATO can easily capture Moscow today by passing through Finland, Estonia or Latvia. Expert Ukrainian political strategist Mikhail Shitelman said in an interview with UNIAN that the events taking place in Russia recently have made Putin look like a complete loser. A new raid by Russian volunteers is the hottest news for the rest of the week. It looks like they got serious. I remember their second approach, when they also fussed there for quite a long time and the Russians tried to knock them out for quite a long time. Putin also boasted about his exploits. The great patriotic war against the Russian volunteer corps was then going on in the Belgorod region. Now, at least, we know exactly what goals the volunteers are pursuing. They directly and very openly named them participation in elections. Therefore, I think that they must hold out at least until Sunday in order to completely ruin the elections for Putin to show that he does not rule this country. Mikhail Shitelman said, according to him, Putin personally, okay. What's more important here is what his team thinks now, what his elite thinks. The same governors. They are important people. Should be. Where should they go now? What should they tell their population? How should they answer for all this and to whom? In this situation, Putin was presented as a complete loser in front of his entourage. Let's look at the political task of the war. The electorate is not important to us. We are not interested in what 140 million people think. What is important to us is what 1.2 million of the real elite of Russia think. And most likely, the fighters of these battalions do not need to achieve the goal that they voice advancing on Moscow. It seems to me that a revolution in the Kremlin can happen much faster if volunteers move deeper and deeper within a week or two. And they can advance. Look how the Russian army runs. After all, practically no one resists. Entire checkpoints there fled. Question. Why is everything left to chance? And the answer to this question is the simplest. They simply have no one. The entire Russian army is in Ukraine. Everything else is just some kids who don't understand how to fight. Meanwhile, professional soldiers came against them. Of course, they will run away. There is no army inside the country. It is a fact. Today, Russia can be taken with bare hands. 
If NATO had decided to capture Moscow or St. Petersburg, they would have taken it without losses coming from Finland, Estonia or Latvia, Mikhail Schittelman said. Cool,